Well, Andrew, what we can tell you tonight is that Finance Minister Bill Morneau has reached an agreement in principle with Kinder Morgan on the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion. And a senior federal official says the agreement will allow the pipeline expansion to go ahead this summer and save those associated construction jobs. And right now, tonight, lawyers and officials from both sides are still hammering out the final language and the paperwork of this agreement. And of course, until that is done, this is still just an agreement in principle. But this is how the senior official describes what's on the table. What Morneau has negotiated will enable us to now go and get the pipeline built. It's the beginning of getting it built. Now, just what that means specifically is still a closely guarded secret here in Ottawa. Kinder Morgan is a publicly traded company, and all of these pipeline discussions have been happening subject to a non-disclosure agreement. And because of that, the senior official I spoke with would not specify what Morneau and the company had landed on. But there are three options on the table. We know that Morneau has already announced that the federal government is willing to compensate Kinder Morgan for any financial loss caused by British Columbia's attempts to obstruct the pipeline. That's option one. Option two is that Ottawa could buy, build, and then sell the pipeline once the work is complete. And the third option is that it could buy it from Kinder Morgan right now and then put it on the market for investors willing to pick up the project and then build it themselves. Well, the plan, as of tonight, is for Bill Morneau to make this public tomorrow, make an announcement tomorrow after the federal cabinet meets at 7.30 in the morning, but sometime before the stock markets open. Right, but as you say, critical details still to come. Uh, and I think of, you know, Kinder Morgan's deadline still being a couple of days away on Thursday. Why announce this tomorrow? Well, they want to clear the decks. They, they've got some important, uh, Morneau and the Prime Minister, they, this will allow them to speak to key business audiences this week to give clearer answers on what's going to happen with the pipeline. Tomorrow afternoon, Trudeau is in Toronto taking part in a Bloomberg business function where he wants to talk about growing the economy. Later in the day, Morneau and the Prime Minister are going to sit down with a round table of business leaders. And then Morneau goes west on Wednesday. He's in Calgary speaking to the Chamber of Commerce. On Thursday, he's in British Columbia at, in Whistler to chair a meeting of the G7 finance ministers and central bankers. So they wanted to get the decks cleared and get all of this locked down before the events of this week uh, rolled out. And if the lawyers don't hit a snag tonight, Andrew, it should all be wrapped up by tomorrow morning. All right. David Cochran breaking the story for us tonight. Thanks so much. Now let's break down exactly what is on the table here. Kinder Morgan wants to expand the existing 60-year-old Trans Mountain Pipeline from just outside Edmonton to the Vancouver area. It's a $7 billion project that would ultimately allow Alberta to sell more oil to Asian markets. But that means more tanker traffic on the West Coast. Hence, the bitter fight between the Alberta and B.C. governments. Two NDP premiers with dramatically different ideas about the right way forward, but both willing to put trade and their economies on the line to get their way. All Canadians should understand that if the path forward for the pipeline through BC is not settled soon, I am ready and prepared to turn off the taps. Alberta passed legislation that would allow the province to restrict oil and gas shipments to BC. That could wreak havoc on the BC economy and could cause already high gas prices in that province to spike. Rachel Notley has to aggressively defend the pipeline project. Thousands of jobs there depend on the oil sands. And John Horgan is fighting back. We believe that we have been on a course uh, all along to defend the interests of British Columbians, which is what we set out to do when we were sworn in as a government last uh, July. The BC NDP vowed in the provincial election last year to stop the Kinder Morgan pipeline project. I don't work for Kinder Morgan. I work for the people of British Columbia. And keep in mind, the NDP is clinging to power with the help of the Green Party, which also opposes the pipeline. And another reason Horgan isn't compromising. So with all that at stake, plus news tonight that an agreement's been reached, what could still stand in the way of construction? Well, the courts, for one. Most notably, John Horgan has asked BC's highest court to decide if his government has the right to bring in stricter rules for oil moving through the province. And at the same time, several First Nations and environmental groups want the federal court to decide if the National Energy Board fulfilled its legal obligation to adequately consult them. Now, throughout the entire dispute, we've also seen protesters trying to intervene directly, probably among the most high profile of, among them, federal Green Party leader Elizabeth May. She was arrested at a pipeline protest about two months ago, released later that same day. And now after her day in court, she's pleaded guilty to criminal contempt. I believe that I was acting under a sense of moral duty. That's been made clear in the court today. The judge says that's no excuse and he's right. In law, it's no excuse to say I felt a higher moral calling. 
Now, of course, protesting itself is not illegal, but a court injunction was in effect last March, preventing protesters from getting too close. Elizabeth May broke that injunction when she and an NDP MP, Kennedy Stewart, helped block a road at Kinder Morgan's Burnaby Mountain facility. May has been ordered to pay a $1,500 fine. Stewart will pay $500.